Well, hey, welcome back. I'm Paul. Our question today comes from Dave in the United States. Now, Dave, you could have done better than that. The United States is a pretty big-ass country. <laughs> All right. Dave doesn't want to be known what state he's in. Paul, <clears throat> I am intrigued by the PS Audio Perfect Wave products and specifically the I squared S interface. Please describe how I squared S, it looks like I2S, differs and the sonic advantages. Thanks. Well, let's let's first talk about <clears throat> what <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> let's first talk about what I squared S is, and then um, we'll talk about what its advantages are. So inside every D to A converter and every CD player is the I2S bus. Now, let's just take a CD player because a CD player is a transport and a DAC in one box, right? So how is the information from the transport connected to the DAC inside of a, um, a, a CD player? Well, this I2S, this I squared S interface is what connects them. And there are a number of lines so, uh, that, that are required to get everything we need. Okay, so when we pull data off of a transport, off of a CD or a Blu-ray or whatever it is we're, <clears throat> we're pulling it off, there are clock lines and data lines. There's a bit clock, a word clock, and a master clock, and a data line. And the data has the actual musical information. The clocks keep everything moving at a proper pace. And every word that comes out of there, we have to say, okay, here's the beginning of a word, here's the end of a word, um, and, and, and like that. So unlike what you might think, digital data has many components. And those are all described in this I squared S interface, which is inherent in every DAC, every CD player. So we don't normally see I squared S data coming out of a transport, right? What you normally see is a coax or a toss link, maybe AES, EVU, right, an XLR. But in any case, it's a single wire. We're going to ignore, we'll ignore AES, EVU, which is essentially one wire. It's just, it has both, it, it, you know, as one goes up, the other goes down. It's a balanced cable, but there's only one thing coming out. And that is called SPDIF, the Sony Philips Digital Interface. So in the early 1980s, when CD was first released, Sony and Philips, who invented the CD, didn't want to have a multi-conductor cable coming out of their CD players. And they had <clears throat> plenty of reasons why they wanted to do it. At first, um, the digital output of a, of a player had cover art that you could put onto a, if you had a special little receiver on your television, you could see cover art that came out. And then they had this, and they, they tried a bunch of different things. But inherent in that SPDIF signal, the Sony Philips digital interface, was the digital data and all the clocks. But it's unlike I squared S, it's only one cable. So how'd they do that? So what they do and this was invented you know, a long time ago, is they multiplex all the signals together. So if you take the four lines of I squared S, and there's, I think there's five because it's not one of the lines but ground, but if you take the, the, the data, the clocks and the data from the I squared S as separate, and you combine them all together into this uh, format called a biphase mark two, I think it's biphase mark two code, but anyway, it's, it's, a, uh, it, it's a means of throwing all those things together in a type of code. It can then go out in one cable with one conductor and a ground. That's our coax or our SPDIF output or TOS link. And then when it gets into, our, and that comes out of the transport, when it then goes into the DAC, now we have to take it back apart. And we have to separate all those clocks and those, that data 
those data from uh, each other. So we get it back to I squared S. So in the transport, we start as I squared S. We then multiplex it down, squeeze it down into one. It goes out through SPDIF. And then it has to be re or undone, uncoded back into work in the DAC. So our I squared S, which we certainly didn't invent, um, is simply saying there's damage done when you multiplex this together and you pull it back out. I mean, for years, the, the, the jitterbugs and all that um, took care of, of those problems of pulling SPDIF back into uh, a proper signal. And it's always better not to squeeze it down and bring it back up, which is I squared S. So out of the back of our transports and into the input of our DACs, we have an HDMI cable that carries this I squared S data. And yes, it sounds considerably better because you haven't mucked about with it and gotten everything squeezed in and then squeezed back out through the use of phase lock loops and all these other tricky things to try and get it back. I mean, you can't make it better, right? You can only make it worse. And so by keeping the I squared S data in its original format as we do through the HDMI cable, and we use HDMI cables only because they're a great, well-shielded, multi-conductor cable. Could be anything, but that's easy to find and that's what we use. And yes, it sounds considerably better. And there are a few, and we have published that spec that we use on our data. It's, it's available publicly, and a number of other country, companies, probably no countries, but another, uh, uh, other companies have uh, uh, implemented it because it's a better way of delivering data. So, hope that answers your question. We'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye-bye.